Welcome Honors Algebra 2 students to day 20 of chapter 7 where we're going to solve fractional equations. Looking at these problems, the one thing we want to notice is that there are variables in the denominator. So when we start these equations, we have to look at when the denominator will equal 0 because we can't have that. That will be undefined. So looking at our first example, notice that the denominator for the first one is just 1. That's okay. And the next two are x minus 2. Right off the bat, what x value makes the denominator 0? Well, that is x equals 2. So once I solve my entire equation, I know that if my answer is 2, I cannot have that because it's going to make the denominator equal to 0. So I like to do that right off the bat, right at the very beginning, that don't want to forget, but hey, if I get an answer of 2, I have to cross it off. It will not work. Now, let's actually solve it. Since we have fractions, in order to add fractions, we need common denominators. So that means I'm going to multiply the first equation by the numerator x minus 2 and denominator by x minus 2 in order to get a common denominator. In the numerator, make sure we distribute. So you'll get x squared minus 2x all over x minus 2. And then we still have our x over x minus 2 equals 2 over x minus 2. Notice the left side has a common denominator, so I can put this as one big happy fraction. I'll have x squared minus 2x plus x all over my common denominator. I'm going to combine like terms, so my negative 2x plus x, so I have negative I have, x squared minus x all over x minus 2. And nothing else in the numerators can be combined. Notice now that I have the common denominator on both sides, and there's one fraction on each, what I can do is pretty much eliminate that denominator. Okay, it's the same denominator for both, so I can just look at the numerators and set those equal now. So that means it's just x squared minus x equals 2 because of those common denominators. This kind of looks like a quadratic to me, so I'm going to move this over. When I have a quadratic, I want to make sure I set it equal to 0 when I solve. Looks like I'm going to factor. So I'm going to try to find two terms that add to negative 1, multiply to negative 2, which is x minus 2, x plus 1. I now have a zero product property, so I set each term equal to 0, and I get my two answer choices. Now before I circle my final answer, I need to look back up at the top and realize that, oh no, x cannot equal 2, otherwise my denominator will be 0. So my only answer is x equals negative 1, because x equals 2 makes the denominator equal to 0. Okay, moving to my next one here. Looks a little more complicated, but we'll do it together. I want to first figure out when the denominator equals 0. These are my fractional equations. So since there's a variable in the denominator, I need to first figure out when it would equal 0. Well, looking at the first denominator here, x minus 3. If x equals 3, then my denominator would be 0. Same thing with my next equation. If x equals negative 4, my fraction would have a denominator of 0. If I look here, it's actually very interesting to notice that this can be factored into x minus 3, x plus 4. So if you want to take a quick moment just so that you visualize and see this, That's the same thing. Which is helping me see my common denominator 
And it's also helping me see that these are the only two options when my denominator would equal zero. Because if I did a zero product property right here, this would be three, this would be negative four. Both those cannot be answer choices. So now that I have my values where x cannot be, I'm adding fractions, so I need common denominators. Now, there's two options for this problem. I'm going to show one way and then another way, and you can decide which method you like best. Notice this first term just has x minus 3. This one just has x plus 4, but this one has both. So my least common denominator is going to be x minus 3, x plus 4, that together which means I need to multiply the first term by x plus 4 over x plus 4 in order to get the least common denominator. And then I also have to multiply this term by x minus 3, x minus 3, in order to get my common denominator. Make sure in the numerators that we distribute, so this will become 5x plus 20, over my denominator that now has both terms. Make sure you distribute again x squared minus 3x all over my common denominator. It does not matter the order of the denominator, right? If it was x plus 4 or x minus 3 first, it does not matter. Now, on the left side, I have the common denominator, so let's combine our numerators on the left side. Doing so, you'll get x squared. You have 5x minus 3x, so I'm just going to combine those like terms right away with a plus 20 left over. And the right side is the exact same. Just like I mentioned in the first example, because there's just one fraction on each side with the same denominator, we can just get rid of it and leave just our numerators equal to each other. To me, I see an x squared, some x terms, and just some constants. So I'm going to treat it like a quadratic and set it equal to zero. That means I'll have x squared, I'll have plus 4x's, minus 21 equals zero. I'm going to factor, find terms that add to 4, multiply to negative 21. Complete the zero product property, which is setting each term equal to zero. And before I circle my answer, I need to check from the beginning on which values would make the denominator equal to zero. Well, that's x equals three, I can't have that. So this answer does not work. My only answer choice is x equals negative seven. That is one potential way. If you like it, go with it, it will always work. Another potential way I wanna show though same problem, so I'm going to take a moment and rewrite it. I'm going to write or, this is another option. Please make sure you write it down because in this case, either option works, but maybe in another situation, this way is the better way. So I'm just rewriting the original problem. Notice here, again, this denominator right here is the same thing, I'm going to actually just erase it, as my two factors that were on the left side. That's a very interesting fact to notice. Again, the least common denominator is going to be x minus 3, x plus 4. So if I want to just get rid of the denominator from the beginning, that could be an option, which means I'm going to multiply the first term by that denominator. The entire least common denominator, just the numerator. 
I have to do that on all three terms, otherwise you're not doing proper math, right? You're not making an even equation. So I multiply each of the terms by that least common denominator. Now I'm going to look at each term individually. If I look here, notice these would go in the numerator next to the 5. But hey, these are the same. Because they're the same, I can just cross them out. They cancel, leaving me just with 5 times x plus 4 for this term. No denominators and x plus 3 cancel. If we now look at this term, this would be multiplied by x in the numerator, but these match. So they would cancel out, leaving me just plus x times x minus 3. If I look on the right side, this would be multiplied over here, and both would cancel. That's so nice. Cancel, 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 just leaving me with 41 minus 2x. Now I don't have to worry about any fractions. All I have to worry about is distributing on the left side and solving my quadratic. Once you distribute, you should get 5x plus 20 plus x squared minus 3x. Let's solve this quadratic, getting it equal to 0. So you'll have x squared plus 4x minus 21. Factor zero product property. And don't forget, from the beginning of this problem all the way up at the top, x cannot equal 3. You also could put it down here when you solve, like right off the bat, you're looking. You're like, yep, x cannot equal 3. x cannot equal negative 4, which helps you cross off this answer. And you get the same answer as if you did it the green way. So it doesn't matter which method you choose. Whatever makes it easier for you. Last example, you're doing great. First thing you want to notice is that it is a fractional equation, so the denominator cannot be 0, so x cannot equal 2. Keep that in mind, write it, maybe bubble it so you don't forget it at the beginning. Well, right off the bat, they have the same denominator. You just have fraction on the right and the left, I can just get rid of that and set my numerators equal to each other. How do you want to do a square? Well, a square root. So x would equal plus or minus 2. Oh, but keep in mind, x cannot equal 2. So the only potential answer is negative 2. If you have any questions, please bring them to class. But this is our first day on solving fractional equations.